What's up everybody, Unrested back again. Doing a little bit of a ramble, but this is kind of a JFAC too. This is a JFAC on uh, whether or not Japanese kids are good at school. And right now you can see right behind me, Japanese kids. Not at school, but it's okay, it's Sunday, that's alright. Um, are they good at school? I had a viewer on Facebook write me a message and just say, you know, are kids in general at schools in Japan from, I'm guessing what they meant, they didn't say the exact grades, but elementary school on up to junior high school to high school, um, are they good kids? Like, do they tend to be disciplined as I see in the movies or videos that I watch or, you know, anime or manga, which I wouldn't say they always portray them as good. Like, for example, you got the movie like Crows, which is, I'm sure, an exaggeration. I'm sure everybody understands that. No one is really thinking any kind of school is actually like that. Or uh, a manga like Chromati High School, which is a, a very funny manga. If you don't know about that one, it's this high school of, like, ultra-dumb kids, and it's it's hilarious. I've, I've taught at a school like that before. Um, but anyway, um, they were just asking, you know, like, what is the actual truth, not just our perception of what Japanese students are actually like? And I would say, in general, the average Japanese student is a good kid. Uh, is, I would say, I don't, I don't know if I want to go as far as to say discipline, but I would say, like, a good kid in general. like not wanting to start a fight, probably, you know, do what they're told, um, you know, not be extremely disobedient to the teacher, but that doesn't mean that all kids are good in Japan. Um, there are some very, very bad schools. There are some ultra bad schools, and I have taught at them. I actually, I used to rather enjoy teaching at some of the, I guess you would say crummier schools that um, my area had to offer. Um, you usually got a choice of contracts, and I tended to really enjoy working at the ones that had some of the worst reputations because you were appreciated so much. Um, you were appreciated so much because oftentimes there had been other gaijin that hadn't completed the contracts because the work environment had either been like too chaotic or too crazy or they didn't feel appreciated by the kids. Which, first of all, I think you've got to understand if you take one of these ALT jobs, that's what gets us into these elementary, junior high school, and high school jobs, you're not an actual teacher. ALT literally means assistant language teacher. So you are an assistant to the language teacher. If you came there expecting to get treated like someone who is a certified Japanese teacher, certified as in certified in Japan Japanese teacher, you're not going to get that because you're not, um, unless unless you have a very very special um, situation in which you came to Japan, trained, and got your certificate in Japanese and did all the tests in Japanese. You are most likely, I would say, almost 100% of the time, a gaijin who's been asked to assist an actual language teacher, and that doesn't always mean that the language teacher can actually speak English, even if they are the official English teacher of the school. Um, that doesn't mean they can actually speak English, so that's kind of funny. Just something I should note. But getting back on topic with students, yeah, there's not always good students. Um, there's some actually very bad students. There's actually entire schools filled with bad students. Uh, for example, one area I used to work out in, uh, Osaka here, a very kind of not so good area. I don't want to trash it too much, but it was called Tondobayashi. I don't want to say the school name because I don't think you should trash the schools or give them a bad reputation. Who knows, maybe I'm setting myself up for slander if I do. Um, the school was an elementary school. I'll start with that story first. And it was it was pretty bad. The school was pretty beat up. There's like broken furniture in the hallways, like lights hanging from the ceiling. The kind of school you work at where you think, man, they're probably really happy they have electricity and running water, and that's about it. Like, I don't know what had happened with their government program because they were a public school. I, it didn't look like the government were taking much care of them at all. Um, so their situation was pretty rough. They had a lot of kids whose parents just never took care of them and just never responded to any kind of information from the classroom, from the teachers, from the principal, anything like that. So if they had a troubled student, um, it was completely left up to the teachers to try and uh, work with that. And you know, they did the best they could. They, they were teachers that really worked hard. I'm not gonna say it was lazy teachers. It was by no means lazy teachers there. They all worked really well. They were very nice. They were very cordial to me. They treated me great. Um, but they had a very rough situation. They had some pretty troubled kids. For example, one kid was this really big little fat little round kid, man. And he's just, I don't know, he never wanted to go to class. That was his situation. He never ever wanted to go to class. He'd hang out in the teacher's room all day. Like we have this the way it works out in the Japanese school is the teacher's room is like this giant room that has many, many desks and all the teachers from every class sit in there. I guess it just makes it easier for them to have meetings and stuff like that. Like they don't need to 
separately go to a meeting room, they can just have a meeting in that room. When the principal stands up, he pretty much talks to everyone at their desks. I guess it's almost like a second classroom, really. It's the teacher's classroom. Um, and he would have uh, himself sitting in there all day, um, and when the bell would ring, he would refuse to go. Uh, he would, in fact, um, refuse to go so badly that uh, the coach of the school, which often happens to be the person who does the discipline in schools, in elementary, junior high school, and high school, uh, that person would have to come in there and literally have to try and drag him to class. Like, not in an aggressive way, but in the way that he could most do without being, I guess, hurtful or, you know, inflicting any sort of pain. Like, literally pick him up by the shoulders and try to move him to class. And that kid would literally grab onto teacher's desks, like knocking shit off desks, spilling stuff everywhere, knocking stuff over, throwing a fit. Um, There's times he'd break out into such a fight that the coach would literally have to like hold him down for a second while he'd calm down. Like this kid was just going nuts, man. And uh, later I taught at another school two years after that. And one of the teachers from that school had transferred over to the same school I was teaching at later in life. And I asked her, I said, what's the update on him? How's he doing? Because he was like, Roku Nensei, Go Nensei, uh, like fifth or sixth grade when I finished teaching at that school. So he would have been graduated by now, moved on to junior high school. And unfortunately, the report was he had ended up in jail. Ended up in jail at junior high school age. That means like 12 or 13. So most likely some sort of juvenile prison, I, I'm guessing, is what the situation is. I don't know a lot about prison in Japan. Never been. Hopefully never will. Um, but yeah, he had ended up in prison, so his, his life had not gone too well. That, that school in general had a lot of trouble. Um, a lot of troubled kids, a lot of troubled families. Um, I think dealing with really stressful situations because they tend to come from really low-income families. Not saying all low-income families are bad, but this situation there was. Um, they were dealing with some rough situations. Kids who would fight a lot. Uh, kids who were just absolutely outright rebellious. I had one class where literally like kids would stand up on their desks and throw paper at the teacher and stuff like that. And I would literally in that class, I would just stop teaching for a second and just wait. Like I wouldn't, getting overly aggressive or angry wouldn't really do anything. I never really thought yelling at students is communicating with them. So I would just sit there and wait and just be like, just tell me when you're ready. And they'd start to realize like, oh, well, we're kind of really, you know, embarrassing ourselves at this point, so they would finally calm down. Um, but that's what you'd need to do to get through to that class. Like, just stop for a second and be like, look, I can't even talk. I can't even hear myself talk. And uh, that's when they'd finally be like, oh, well, they always liked me. The kids always liked me. Um, so they would calm down just so they could hear me talk or make a funny joke. or Because I'd try to keep all my lessons funny or like a game or like humorous. I'd never try to be like, here's this book, study, 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 here's some cards, memorize these cards. Um, that's pretty much all you're given is a book and cards, but I don't like to actually do a lesson that way. I don't like to actually just be like, keep memorizing this book, keep memorizing these cards and these words. Um, Cause you'll just end up boring the hell out of kids. Kids aren't there to do that. They're, they're there to have fun, uh, not to have like ruthless learning regiments. Um, so that being said, um, Moving on to junior high school, yeah, I taught at some bad junior high schools. Man, we're, I can't remember the area's name that I taught this one at, and it was bad, man. It was, like, really bad. Um, the kids there just had no respect for the teachers at all, and there would be times where I could barely teach class. Uh, they would just, like, be throwing stuff at the teacher nonstop, yelling in the middle of class, um, just yelling insults at the teacher. There was a couple teachers there, like, there was one younger guy, um, and one woman and they they did pretty well with teaching they commanded their classes pretty well but I remember there was this one kind of uh, shorter I don't know like middle-aged teacher and he just got no respect I felt so bad for him like he would just literally get it shouted down by kids in the class who were taller than him um, and he just it was hard to ever get any lessons done with him unfortunately um, that being said uh, my catchphrase of course um, it can happen really at any level. I would say maybe at college level you're not going to see stuff like that because at that point you're dealing with kids who are choosing to be at school, not forced to be at school. Which really in Japan, if you don't know, um, you are only forced by the government to go to school until the junior high school level. After that you can actually drop out of school. So you can drop out of school really early in Japan. If you do, you have little to no future. Um, I mean, you're, you're going to be working kombini all your life. Not that there's anything wrong with a kombini job, but if it was your only option, you might feel a bit frustrated frustrated with uh, Japan. I could understand where you'd uh, feel kind of closed in. Um, high school, man, I worked at one of the worst high schools ever in Sakai Kami, man. These kids just didn't, I don't, I don't know, like you've got you've to enter in different levels and stuff to get into different schools. 
and uh, these these were pretty much had been like the level like the lowest level tests that you would pass to get into a high school so you're dealing with your lowest level of education for the students there and I mean they they just didn't even know like simple stuff like I'm talking there was kids there who didn't know the pyramids were in Egypt that uh, would say they'd love to visit France in the UK like stuff like that <laughs> like like you know like simple stuff like you're like what France in the UK or like you would just tell them stuff like um, like how many countries speak this language and how many countries speak this language and then you'd be like how many speak Japanese and they'd be like I don't know how many countries do and you'd be like well just Japan and they'd be like really we're the only country that speaks Japanese and you'd be like yeah I mean I guess you know Guam can speak a little bit of Japanese if you want to count that but that's not any kind of official language and they'd be like wow really that's so crazy like they they couldn't believe it like they I, I guess they had a, a very large expanded view of how much Japan was all over the world. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting situation. So um, that really is kind of an example of how not every school you're going to go to is super disciplined. Like for example, one really weird thing they had at that school was they would make me run English club. I had never asked to start it or be part of it and usually you're not forced into any kind of club but if they ask you to do it you should do whatever they ask you and I said yeah of course I'll I'll run it and then they would like sign kids up for it and uh, the kids would just never come like I would just be like oh did they ask to join or they'd be like no, no no we just signed them up for it because we wanted them to go to English club but no one would ever come like I'd get to the classroom and I'd be like do you want me to like campaign for it or something or like let kids know and they'd be like no no no, no we'll just sign them up and uh, I don't know maybe they're running some sort of scam there like maybe they could like get some extra funds from the government if they had kids signed up or something like that and if, if government officials ever came in or like are you really running an English club I'd be like well I guess I mean I show up to a room where no kids ever come um, so that, that was a bit weird um, I always I felt kind of bad for the teachers always at these schools because they would work hours like seven to seven and it was mostly only because they were showing that they would stay there long hours like they didn't actually have this much work to do but literally they'd be asked either to stay there that long by the principal or they would be staying that long because the principal wouldn't leave until that time or you know they couldn't be the first person to leave the school it was really ridiculous like I knew one guy he would always be falling asleep during class and I'd be like you know what time did you finish work he'd be like, oh yeah I didn't get out of here till 2 30 a.m. because some kids got in a fight and they wanted me to talk to him for a while and I was like oh, what like how's that you know your job to stay after like he was just only the English teacher that was it he wasn't any kind of like dis disciplinary person or anything like that so I never understood that um, I think a lot of the times what you see with these situations where the kids are really bad it's oftentimes where they've reported it back to the parents and the parents rely 100% on the school to discipline their kid and the, 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 the teachers just don't have time I mean you're talking like 40 around 40 to 45 kids sometimes 50 kids in a class I mean the classrooms were packed and they didn't have time to give each of these kids individual attention. It wasn't them being bad teachers or them being lazy teachers by any means. It was them dealing with what little resources they had. So I wouldn't blame the teachers. In a lot of those cases, sadly, I am going to blame most of the parents. Um, they did not give their kids any sort of punishment. Like there was no sort of punishment for these kids when they did something bad. Even now, look at this kid back here. You want to be in the video? What do you want to be in the video? Oh. <laughs> Like you thought I couldn't notice. And uh, so yeah, like you got kids who like their parents never take care of them and uh, they never give them any attention, never give them any punishment. That was a big thing. Yeah, getting back to that. They'd never give these kids any punishment. And uh, they just never saw anything wrong with what they did because if you're never punished for anything you do, you know, good or bad, you, you don't know what is right or wrong. You don't know that there is a certain limit to what you can do wrong. That you are starting to push the limits of what people can take or and I think that's that's what happened with these a lot of these teachers and that would force them to a point of almost just giving up on any kind of discipline as well so it's kind of a rough situation it's not every school in Japan um, and every school is not good and every school is not bad and there's a lot of schools in between that um, but I don't want anybody to believe for a second that every school has wonderful children that are 100% disciplined and that Japanese kids are nonstop studying machines. They are very good at studying. They are very good at memorizing. Um, I think you'd be surprised how much English kids can write here but cannot speak. They are great at memorizing, but that's usually all they can do in these classes because often, like I, like I said, oftentimes the English teacher cannot speak English. So they just get them to memorize like all these sentences that are totally useless and long-winded sentences that no one speaks like 
how are you? How are you doing? What is your name? Like these really, no one says stuff like that and they're never teach him stuff like, hey, what's up? Like you would never see the sentence, hey, what's up, Todd? It would always be like, hello, how are you doing? My name is blah, blah, blah. And unless somebody's like a robot, they don't speak like that. Um, so, I mean, that's some of the troubles with school in Japan, uh, you know, but again, it, it's, it's not a bad situation. I'd say in general, your average Japanese student, very polite, very respectful, um, will treat their teacher pretty good, especially you being the English teacher, they're usually pretty excited to meet a gaijin, a foreigner of any type, of any country, of any origin, and uh, if nothing else, even if they're not interested in English, they're interested in just getting to know you. So I would say if you don't get to teach them English, if you don't get to connect with them on that level, connect with them on just getting them excited either about you, your country, or you know where you're from, or something, some small aspect. and. Uh, See if you get them interested in that. Don't don't try to force English into their heads. Um, you know, do what you can with the tools you're given because you are only given so many tools. The government does choose the book for you. The government does choose a lot of the vocab, the cards, and everything. Just try to make it as fun as you can, as interesting as you can, and connect with them on some aspect of it. That being said, this is a JFAC on students in Japan. Are they good or bad? I am unrested. If you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe.